Argo, the new Hollywood film about the 1979 hostage crisis in Iran, has gone down a storm. Guess where? In Iran. Farnaz Fasihi is with us in, uh, is joining us from Beirut. Farnaz, why is it so popular in Iran? I think because Iranians are really eager to see how Hollywood uh, has portrayed uh, one of the most uh, historic uh, events in, in modern Iranian history that really changed the course of uh, Iran's relationship with the world. Yeah, I mean, because that was a major event. It brought down uh, President Carter, Jimmy Carter's government, when essentially, I mean, it was about 444 days they, the, US, the, the students held these hostages in the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Right. I mean, it was a major event for American politics, but it, it, it really changed the, the course of history for Iran's revolution. You know, soon after um, the hostage crisis, the relationship with America broke down. And uh, to this day, 34 days later, 34 years later, they, there's still no official relationship with the U.S. Uh, they've suffered from sanctions as a result of that. They have um, had sort of this standoffish relationship with the West uh, that stems from the hostage crisis. And there was the Iran-Iraq war, which the, uh, the Americans, by and large, supported uh, the Iraqi side uh, during the war. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, ev a lot of it goes back to that initial um, uh, turn in history where they took the Americans hostage and, and let it drag on for as but, long as I it. mean, what, what is fascinating here, Farnas, if anything one would have expected, as you said, this is an American version of something that's a great national pride in Iran. But instead of them criticizing it, well, I'm, I'm sure the government's criticized it, but the people seem to actually be seeing a lot more in this film and actually using it as an excuse for criticizing their own government. Right. I mean, this is the surprising thing that Iranians are sort of watching this movie and, and they're say, seeing a reflection of their own government now in this movie because, um, you know, to, to the Americans and maybe to the general public, this is an event that happened 34 years ago. But if you're living in Iran, uh, almost everybody uh, ha has either been a victim or has witnessed uh, um, interactions with, with these radical groups that are still inside Iran, whether they're, uh, you know, harassing women for the way they wear their um, scarf, or whether they're breaking down at, uh, parties at home, or whether they're breaking, uh, they're uh, beating up people at uh, democracy rallies. Uh, so there's this sort of tendency toward radicalism and violence is something that's uh, still very present in Iranian um, uh, sort it, of it, politics it, and, it, and Essentially, it's a, rem it's a reminder that things haven't really moved on. Um, but what right. is interesting as well is I gather there haven't been any public showings of this film. Um, but So this is all just DVD, DVDs that have been copied you know, and, and passed around. Right. This is all bootleg DVDs that, that, have, uh, that have Persian subtitles. Um, Iran has the, in Iranian cinemas. They haven't officially um, uh, uh, put on Argo, uh, but they they they, they did uh, screen it uh, at a university. That's the only public screening we know uh, of the movie. But it's just going um, hand by hand and house to house. <laughs> Farnas, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, what's fascinating as well now is that Iran apparently is planning to make their own version of events too. Right. Exactly. They're they're thinking of making a counter Argo. Uh, that uh, captures their own narrative. Counter-agro, I like that. Thanks, Farnaz. <laughs>